Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast, so let's do this. What's up, friends, and welcome back to the Mompreneur Live Remixed podcast. This is your CEO, your Chief Encouragement Officer, Martine Williams, and I'm excited for part two of the conversation with the Scott Monroe as he shares his just his his life skills, his life lessons, and how he has been able to uh, support his wife and her role as a mompreneur and just some of the things they did together in their relationship and uh, just the faith journey that, that they were on together and individually. So I hope you enjoyed part one. This is part two and let's do this. So we talk a lot about, or you hear a lot about mom guilt Mm -hmm. and there's not a whole lot of talk about dad guilt and I'm sure it's there, you know? So Mm -hmm. is that something that you ever or have dealt with is, you know, the dad guilt? Absolutely. I mean, I think for me, and I, I've, I try not to be a person of regret mm-hmm. at all. You can, I mean, once you start down the regret train, I mean, oh, yeah. honestly. It's like a downward could, spiral. Yeah, we could, I mean, we could, there, there's a million things we could regret in life. I've never tried to, you know, I've tried really hard not to regret stuff. But as a dad, you always look back and you have guilt over, oh, I missed it there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I may have over, you know, and it was, it was never abusive to the kids, but, you know, I may have overreacted on that. I may have been too harsh then. Maybe I wasn't, maybe I wasn't harsh enough. Maybe I wasn't firm enough here or uh, so, so that's really regrets. But, but then there is this guilt that comes in because we were both deeply engaged in the business. You know, it's different when you're in two different businesses, but well, I don't know that it's different, but I think the guilt of, of not drawing those lines and not being intentional about, you know, paying attention to your kids, the guilt of staring at the business and just kind of saying, yeah, uh uh-huh to your kids and your family, that, that to me, that's where the guilt would come in is when I realized, you know, when your kid says something Mm -hmm. and they ask a follow-up question, and you don't know what the first thing they said really was mm-hmm. is when it really hits home hard because mm-hmm. you're hearing, but you're not listening. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think, and just take that and make an analogy for that for just doing business in general, mm-hmm. when you're hearing, yeah, kids are in the house. Yeah. You're making sure they got their lunches. Yeah. You're making sure they, they get picked up and, you know, or you pick up their day for prom or whatever, like, yeah, you can do all those things, but are you really present in their life? And, you know, we, we had a, a thing we used to talk about being present means being where your feet are. And that means being in the room. And, you know, if, if I'm present with my kids, am I really present with my kids? And right. I think that's probably if, if I had any guilt as, a, you know, dad guilt, it was that it was being there, but not really being present right. far too often. Because right. you're distracted, you're troubled. I was. Jesus said to Martha, "You're Martha. You're troubled with many things." You know, because mm-hmm. she was so busy, and Mary was just sitting there at his feet, wanting to worship him. Yeah. And, yeah. and Martha, Martha wasn't doing bad things. No. Martha was doing what needed to be done. Yeah. Like it right. was good. Everybody kind of downs Martha. Martha was responsible. Was right. you know honestly the responsible one. But Mary just understood what she had in front of her was the Lord, and and so you have to find a balance between your work and then just being intentional to be present and be where your feet are uh, for whatever that is. And that's for your family or, or your Lord. So. Well, cause there's always going to be work to be done. 
I mean, the, yeah. there's, there's always something, there's always another email you can check. There's always another call you can make. There's always another something you can post on Facebook or on social. So the work is never going to end. You just have never. to draw that line and say, okay, from this time to this time is when I'm going to try to be very intentional with work and get the work done mm-hmm. and then shut it off, which is hard as entrepreneurs. It really is hard because your brain is always rolling and you're always trying to come up with a new idea or something, but I found that, you know, we're harder on ourselves and we're doing a better job than we think we are. And mm-hmm. Shaw was always, has always been really good at that for me because I have struggled off and on with mom guilt. And he, he would always remind me like, but you get to take the kids and bring donuts to school. How many moms would love to be able to have that flexibility, yeah. but you get to do like, basically you get to do whatever you want with your schedule and how many women would love that. So don't be so hard on yourself that you didn't spend three hours on a board game, you know, <laughs> with the kids or whatever. So I think that's another great way that a, a husband can support um, because I do think women struggle with it a little bit more maybe. Yep. And so for them to be able to just show them, no, you really are doing a better job than you, than you think you are. Cause we're so hard on yeah. ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. Yeah. I know we're not allowed to say this anymore, but, but there is that motherly instinct. And I think that's why women probably struggle with this more is that it, it is a natural thing that God put it to women. And I know there's all kind of, all <laughs> kind of talk of gender roles and all that. Sorry, everybody. I'm not <laughs> making a political statement here. I'm just saying it's natural that women have this desire. Uh, most women have this really strong desire to, for this, you know, to provide that motherly care for people. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful God given gift that, that we should celebrate really. But I think because of that, that's why it's probably stronger mm-hmm. in a relationship, particularly a married relationship, where the where the mom feels more mommy guilt than the dad feels dad guilt, because dads have this other thing that's kind of ingrained in them. And there's right. a lot of dumb things ingrained in guys, but there's there's some good stuff too. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, so. I always like to talk about burnout a little bit on my podcast because that's something I'm super passionate about. I've seen it. I've experienced it personally and I've seen it show itself differently. You know, some people it's just a lack of passion for some it's a physical, you know, thing as long as well as an emotional thing. So I don't think there's anybody who hasn't experienced burnout. So I'm not even going to ask that, but what was that experience like for you, you know, and how long did it last? Like, what did you do to help? Cause I know there's someone listening right now who is 100% burnout and they just think this is just the way it's going to have to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I probably had multiple times of burnout in, in my life. Um, I think, you know, even in the business, when you run a very social business, mm, um, yeah. a relational business in today's climate, I just, I quote myself too often. Sorry, I'm not that <laughs> egotistical. But you have a lot have, of good quotes. So I I have always said that when the personal computer came out and we got access to the internet, that it was like you know giving a weapon to a five year old. Mm-hmm. Because I knew I had been in the ministry and I knew how irresponsible my tongue could be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I think it's uh, oh gosh, is it James? I think it's James where they talk about the tongue a lot and oh, how yeah, dangerous yeah. a weapon it is. And, and, um, but I, <laughs> I just knew that, all right, now, now people are going to be able to sit at a keyboard and be faceless and say things. And you already know, I was talking to our son, Evan, last about this last week, you know, he's dealing with, uh, you know, emails back and forth with a professor and mm-hmm. he realized that he had misread an email he had misread the tone of an email from oh, before. Yeah. And he thought, you know, she's attacking his work he was doing when she's actually trying to refine his work. And he mm-hmm. just, you know, but you can't type it and it and it always typed typed words on an inter- on the internet come across harder anyway. But then people are legitimately being harsh. And mm-hmm. so I, you know, I know in, in our business, I have reached points of burnout because of the way people were expressing themselves in a negative way. And, mm-hmm. and this can happen in any business, in any ministry. We saw, you see it in ministry all the time. You see it if you are Amazon and like, you know, oh, yeah. Amazon, sometimes you want to say, you got a set of screwdrivers in less than 48 hours delivered to your front door. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You, you didn't like the way the box was taped. <laughs> 
That's so true. Oh my goodness. It's so true. So, so I think if, you know, if we talk about cause of burnout for me, one of, you know, one of them has been across the years is that, is that Mm -hmm. our social climate, people feel like they can just express whatever they want to, no matter how hurtful it may be Mm -hmm. and, and forget to appreciate the things they have. I don't know that I have ever handled burnout. Well, to be Mm -hmm. honest with you, Um, Mm -hmm. I I withdraw. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I kind of, get to myself. I go distract myself with other things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I wish I could say that I have success, that I feel like I've successfully handled burnout. I've come through burnout. Right. I've gotten right. through various stages of burnout in my life and, and managed to push through. And, and maybe sometimes that's just moving on to something else. And sometimes it's just taking a break and mm-hmm. getting into something else. The, the problem with that is you, you may still have responsibilities mm-hmm. and you can't just slough your responsibilities because you're burnt out. Right. But you do have to find some way to, you know, to uh, a path to get some respite and some rest and maybe help somebody else help you carry that load. But I think too, the other thing is just, I think one thing stepping away does, it gives you perspective. Mm -hmm, For sure. And if, if I've done one thing well with any kind of burnout in my life is I've, it has, I've stepped away. Now I am an overthinker and uber contemplative and I (laughs) question everything I know to be true constantly, but I stepping away Mm -hmm. and seeing things for what they are from a 10,000 foot view uh, gives you a different perspective on things and very often cures a good portion of burnout right. because you realize, you know, what you're burnout on is a tiny little mm-hmm. set of stuff here. Right. And that's not, that's not the whole. And you have to step back and say, but what's the whole here? And then, how, you know, what is it? What does the big picture look like? Is it still a good thing? Yes, it's mm-hmm. still a good thing, you know, but I think it's hard to get that perspective when you're in the middle and everything that's frustrating you is just pounding, 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 right. pounding. Right. You can't see that. You got to, you got to get back up to look, mm-hmm. look at it from on high and go, okay, Hey, it's you know, just like a battle, right? I mean, you could be, if you were in the middle of a town and, you know, we'll call it France during World War II, in the middle of this little town and, you know, the Nazis are bombing, 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 and everything right. around you is falling apart. But you've got a general who's, you know, up right. on a hill looking mm-hmm. and he's going, yeah, we're, this is getting blown apart down there in this little town. Mm-hmm. But look how we're advancing. And right. Look how we're going to we're about to shut this thing down or, or whatever. And I think you, uh, I, I'm not quoting any I'm not a historian, so I don't know anything <laughs> about World War Two battles. But but I think you it, visual, in the middle though. of. Yeah. In, in the middle of the battle, there's just a lot of smoke and a lot of rubble and a lot of noise. If, but you can very often get to the top and say, well, that's a bat. Yeah, that's a battle. Mm-hmm. But we're winning the war. Right. And, right. And, and getting that perspective is critical to cure burnout. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may not always work, but it, it, if you don't have perspective, you're not going right. to think you can cure burnout. Well, and slow down. Like our, our tendency is just to speed up. You know, just to speed up and go faster and I can, you know, just bulldoze through this instead of taking Mm -hmm. the time to sit back and reflect. And and like you said, just gain facts because we can be so wrapped up in our feelings and feelings just are. They're not saying they're good or bad. But when you're all wrapped up in that, like you said, it's really hard to see. Okay, what is the fact here? Is it really that bad? And if it is, okay, let's fix. Let's address it. Let's get the help that we need. Um, yeah. and just kind of gain that perspective. I heard, um, I saw yesterday on social, a friend was sharing, you know, with everything that's, that happened in Texas, um, this week, she was like, you know, you have the right to choose to not look at the images and to not stay on social and, and feed your mind. If this too much for you, like you, you, it's okay to not look at all of it. It's okay to not feel like you have to give your opinion of it also. And so I think what we consume also during burnout is a huge factor. You know, are you consuming positive things? Are you consuming positive conversations? Because even things that don't even have, have anything to do with you, like what we just experienced, we're all hurting, you know, and that, that contributes to your emotions when you're in the middle of burnout. So I think that's really important too, to make wise choices on what you're consuming. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I think it's enough for us to know that things like that happened Mm -hmm. and for us to be very, very compassionate and caring about it without immersing ourselves in all the details of it, because and the reality is the details of it all aren't going to help us help the situation. Right. Uh, and certainly not going to help us deal if we're already burnt out. I mean, in today's climate, I mean, 
one we're taking in, you know, and there's, there's a lot of studies. John Eldridge has a great book. They talk, he talks a little bit about this, but we're taking on more like something like, I think it's something like 10,000 times the amount of information a day that people did 25 years ago, but it's all, it's all surface information. It's just, and so basically it's all just noise. Even, even the important things become part of the noise. And it's just like, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not good for us. It's not good for our brains. So you're right. It's, you can't just, the things you can't change. Cindy always says like, if I can't change it, I can't dwell on it. Right. That's so true. And we can't, we can't change. People say, well, you can be a change and you can do that. Well, that's fine. Go be passionate about that. Mm -hmm. But we can't allow our minds to be wrapped up in all the particulars and details. It's enough to know that bad things have happened. It's enough to know that there's that stressful political situation, that there's the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need to be ignorant and not, and not know that there are situations in life, in business, in our family. We need to know that they exist, but to, and it, this happens in when you're if you're having a discussion with your partner with your spouse, you know, mm-hmm. are we gonna are we gonna dwell on this and talk about the thousand reasons why you did this <laughs> or again? You know, I mean, right, right. Like, like, do we really need to keep talking about you know? Well, you, well, you didn't <laughs> clean the dishes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll do better. Well, but I mean, we talked about you cleaning the dishes, and we've had four discussions about you cleaning the dishes. I know. Uh, let me let's try to work on that. Well, I mean, I'm trying to decide why you didn't clean the dishes that night. Like, it's you just go. It sounds on, like a conversation on. with me and my kids sometimes, and Sean will look at me like, "Okay, enough," you know, because but, I yeah, am yeah. that. I like. I'm so curious, and I like to ask lots of questions. I like all the details, and sometimes he just looks at me and is like, "Okay, enough." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes you, you look- don't realize you're doing it, you know, and then I'm like, oh, wow, I really was kind of drilling yeah. them pretty hard about that. <laughs> the, the point is to get the candy out of the pinata, not tear the pinata to shreds. <laughs> oh, literally the other night, Shaw, like Lucas couldn't see, but Shaw literally put his hand was like, like, stop, you know, and because um, you can get passionate about, you know, what you're talking about and the point you're trying to drive home. But again, is it yeah. is that is being right or being re- reconciled the most important thing? And I right. think. Um, that sometimes uh, can be hard. So I guess I would like to know if you could speak to, you know, all of the husbands that are supporting the mompreneurs, like if you could Mm -hmm. spend just a few minutes with them, like what would you want them to be able to really understand about this journey of supporting and, and being that, that person for their, the mompreneur? So I I think a couple of things that we've touched on a little bit, but it's really important is first of all, be okay with her having a thing mm-hmm. that may not be a thing you're driving. Mm. Well, Cindy, I had this discussion this week. Sometimes she just likes to drive the car. Right. It is ingrained in me. I drive the car from childhood. Right. And there, there are reasons now I like to drive the car because I get fidgety if I sit too long in the car. <laughs> like, But the reality is that sometimes she likes to drive the car and, mm-hmm. and, it's okay for her to have a thing that she likes to do. It's okay for you to, I, I won't even say make sacrifices, just be responsible enough to say, you know what, I'm going to give you space for that. And I'm going to, you know, find a way to, to support you in that. I would also say to, you know, to men and women, stop, stop being the person that all of the little rules and things said you had to be on everything. It, mm-hmm. You don't, Guys, you don't have to be the breadwinner. Right. You, you you don't have to listen to that voice of your of your you know judgmental father or the father who had too high of expectations or expectations that were set because he was an iron worker or he your mm-hmm. expectations were set because he was a pastor. So now you've got to be a pastor and you got to do it the way he did it. You don't have to do that. You can you can give up some of that for the sake of her doing her thing and finding finding a way for her to fulfill purpose. And sure she has may have a lot of purpose as a mom and a lot of purpose as a wife and a lot of but but she's still it's okay mm-hmm. for her to have a purpose in something else. Right. And and she needs to do that with or without your support. Can you set her up for the best chances of success by ignoring it or for coming alongside her and saying, I'm here. Right. How can I help? Right. Wow. And I I think don't ask the, you know, I've I've had a little bit of coaching training, not much, but um, took a little coaching training just for fun. And I said, you know, don't ask the why questions, ask the how and the what questions. 
how can I help you? That's good. What do you want? To, what do you want to do? Don't, the the why questions are just that just gets you in that spiral where you just mm-hmm. like I say beating the pinata beating the pinata to death, and right. don't need to do that. Don't don't. There's no need to know the whys. You, she'll tell you the why when it's there. She'll have a big why, but but it, it, let share your why if you have a why. But don't constantly be asking, well, why you want to do this? Because right. that the other thing that does is is it shows an insecurity. Mm-hmm. I mean, a very oftentimes it's like, well, why do you need why do you need a job? Right. I've heard a million husbands say, I don't understand why she needs this. It's not about you, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's so true. It's that she it's wants about her. And it's what yeah, she, she wants. wants. You know, it may not be something right. she needs. It's what she wants. And exactly. um, yeah, I mean, the the key theme, I feel like, is just conversation, you know, yeah. being willing to to have these hard conversations. And um, one thing I say all the time, especially when it comes to the spouse, is the timing and the tone of that conversation can make or break that conversation. You know, like. Absolutely being prepared. It's like you prepare for a meeting, like, here's what I want to accomplish. And here's, you know, cause sometimes you can just get all wrapped up in the emotions of the conversation and then it just does not go well. So communicating, communicating, communicating. And I think the last and don't thing, be mel- don't be melodramatic. Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, some of us are, I am way more inclined to be melodramatic than Cindy is no way more come on Scott that's my that's my, <laughs> that's my right brain my right brain I am so melodramatic and you know just try not to be melodramatic just try to listen and 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 don't take everything personally and and yeah communication's critical I mean I think it's the most critical thing is communicating so as a entrepreneur which you are as a husband, you know, as a father, what has been so far on your journey, the most proudest accomplishment? Is that even a word? Did I say that right? What are you most proud of accomplishing along the journey so far? Oh man. There's so many things (laughs) I am from a business perspective. I can give it to you two ways. Uh, From a business perspective, I am most proud that we were committed that our business was committed to, and we were committed to it, not just being about pushing stuff to sell on people Mm -hmm. that it was always about this thing, creating space for you to improve your life Mm -hmm. financially. Sure. But even more Mm -hmm. confidence community, even, even for many. And we just heard this, we were with, you know, a, large group of people a month or so ago in the business. And they, we just heard story after story about how it was ministry to them Mm -hmm. and how these, these sisters in this business were, that was my Christian community. And this is what challenged me. And, you know, a husband that says he was an atheist and because of his wife's spiritual changes, just from being in this business where we sell stuff. Right. um, He he reads, he goes and reads the Bible and becomes a Christian. Like there's, Mm -hmm. Like li- being committed to life change and life impact just as much, if not more than the the transaction of being in retail. There's nothing wrong with having a store and selling stuff. There's nothing wrong right, with being right. in retail, but I'm most proud that it didn't just stop there for us, mm-hmm. that it was about changing people's lives. And then personally, uh, I'm most proud of my kids. Mm-hmm. That by the grace of, by the grace of God, they have just turned out to be great people who want to see the world a better place. And we, you know, we don't always agree with them on how you get there. And, you know, they're both in their twenties and I was in my twenties. So, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, but I'm proud that they aren't the person I wanted them to be. They're trying to be the person God wants them to be and, and whatever that means. And so I'm proud. I'm super proud of, of them as a result of, and then I'm super proud that Cindy and I just are best friends. Mm. After 29 years, we're still best friends. Yeah, that's amazing. Dumb as I've been, <laughs> as, as big, big mistakes as I've made, we're still best friends. Well, amen. That's, a, it's, you know, again, just the, the modeling, the role modeling that you both individually and together have, have had that impact on me personally. And I know so many others. And I know after today's episode, even more people, you know, are going to be impacted. And like I said to you in the email, like there's never been a time under your voice that I have not been inspired, encouraged, and also challenged, you know, to think a little different or to be, you know, just be more open. And so I just so appreciate the, what you have done and the impact you already have had. And there's no doubt that God has way more for you and way more for the impact that you're going to have individually 
and um, as a couple, because he's not done with you. He has, he has so many more assignments uh, for all of us and you um, have just done an amazing job. So I appreciate this interview. And um, I do just want to wrap up just really quickly with some of your favorites. I always like to ask what some of your favorites um, are. So are you reading anything right now or what is your, what has been your all time favorite book? Cause you know, I have a stack. Um, We were actually texting about this the other day, but is there one that you're like every mom, dad, person should read outside of the Bible. We know that's, that's a given. Um, man, there's a couple, but I love, honestly, one of my favorite little books is uh, called Love Does by Bob Goff. Oh yeah. It's an easy read and it's just about loving uncontrollably, having a love bucket that you're just pouring out on people all the time. Um, there was a book I read years ago by Pastor Jack Hayford called The Key to Everything. Mm-hmm. And basically he just talks about all the different versions of the word give, forgiving, giving in, giving up, giving over. Oh, that's cool. Uh, giving and the key to, you know, the key to everything in life is what you give, mm-hmm. you know, and in, in all the different forms. In the last two years, right before COVID happened, I started reading John Mark Comer's The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Mm-hmm. He had no idea. In because you mentioned it. Yeah, I bought that book because you yeah. mentioned it. It's a, it's a challenging read because it, you know, it, it but it, t- it kind of gets you this place where, you know, what really is important and we're hurrying too much in our world and we're, we're taking in too much information and we're rushing too hard toward things. And so I, that book, that book changed my life. I didn't even, I haven't even finished the whole second section of it. I do this with books. I get so deep into them mm-hmm. and I, you know, it takes me takes me three months to work through the chapter I just read personally, because I'm such an overthinker, Processor, um, yeah. but those are, yeah, those are, those are some key books that really mean a lot to me. Well, and I think you're supposed to do that with books, you know, like yeah. I, I'm such a finisher, like I want to get through it and then I kind of go back, but I think you get way more out of it. If you do what you're doing, you know, you're reading yeah. and then you're implementing. Most of us don't have a knowledge problem. We have implementation problems. So I think it's actually right. a really good thing that you're doing that. Um, okay. Favorite quote or favorite like scripture verse. That's just something that is kind of like your life scripture, your life verse, your life quote. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about this earlier, actually. Let me, I got to look because <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's one, that's one of my favorites. Uh, of course, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I love Philippians 1.6, actually. He that started a good work in you, that began a good work in you, is faithful to complete it. You know, he's going to finish it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's good. That's a, that is a hearty reminder when you're kind of stuck somewhere in life. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, another one that, you know, in in Isaiah talks about the day that wait upon the Lord, uh, he'll renew their strength and they'll mount up with wings like eagles and waiting is hard. It is. And in the middle of waiting, though, you've got this promise that he who began this work and you is going to see it through to completion. It doesn't make it any easier to wait in all of our human emotions and mm-hmm. stuff we have to process and we have to figure out how to work through those. But but those kind of promises from God's word that I, that I can through him, I can do mm-hmm. all things in Christ through him, that I um, it's it's OK to wait. <laughs> right. He's going to renew my strength. <laughs> and he started this thing. Why wouldn't you complete it? Right. Right. You know, that's good news. We, I'll just say this real quick. I have recently discovered how often I put my human ways on God. Mm -hmm. So I start things and never finish, but he's not like that. No, no, for sure. Yeah. I, I see this situation over here and I feel this way about it, but he's not like me. He doesn't think about it that way. Right. You know, he, I mean, he has more grace for me than I have for myself. You know, and I, he has yeah. way more grace for other people I have for them, you know? Right. So, uh, so anyway, that's the verse. Love it. Those are verses. Yeah. Okay. Favorite resource or app. I know you use all kinds of apps and things. Is there something right now that you love, whether it be, you know, something for self-care or if it's something professional, something just for you, like what's your favorite go-to resource or app that's either simplifying your life, making it better, enriching it. That, this will surprise you. I have three. <laughs> abide the abide christian meditation app or by biblical meditation app it is great it's you know you can set it to five to 15 minutes and uh you know it's just a great way to to you know the bible says meditate on the word day and night but we in you know, our western culture think meditation is an eastern religion thing and it's not yeah. Yeah. so um 
Uh, so learning to just soak God's word in, think about it, pray through it. Um, Abide is one. I love the Bible app. Uh, those are the super spiritual ones. There's a new app, though. Uh, uh, sorry. It is called. Oh, I can't find it. There is an app that Kevin Costner made. Really? And it is. Yeah. Uh, he, he had something to do with it. And you're going to have to post it on your website. Yeah, we'll put, it, we'll put it, it in the show notes. And it, it's a, basically it's when you're in a place. Mm-hmm. You can, in any town, you can pull up the map of where you are. And there are little dots you know markers on there you can hit and it'll tell you the history of that hotel or it'll tell you oh, what really? happened on this street corner in 1897 or it is like a it's like a real i'm a i said i'm not a history buff and i'm not but i love to know when i go to a place right what, right what happened here what is this place like and uh i wish i could find it but it's uh it is a great app i'll we can post it later I'll yeah, find yeah it. you'll have to find it let me know because I, I know several people right now that i could that would love that that's really cool yeah Shaw would like that. And I don't consider us history buffs either. So anyway, well, thanks again so much, um, Scott, for being on here. Um, We may even make this like a two-part series. There was just so much goodness. (laughs) And as we said, sometimes it's really hard to consume it all in one setting. Um, But I just appreciate your honesty and your vulnerability and uh, the tips. So I pray that you all bring, let your husbands listen to this episode. This is a great episode. All of the ones in June will be great episodes, not just for you to listen to, but maybe it's an opportunity for you as husband and wife to come together and listen to something that will enrich, not just your business. Cause you know, I'm not just about enriching businesses, but enrich your life personally and as a couple um, in your relationship. So thank you so much, Scott. And if you want to, he referenced uh, Cindy. So she was on episode three of the podcast and she was the first turquoise talk that I did um, interviewing mompreneurs. And so this is um, Scott Monroe, her husband, if we didn't say that, or you didn't kind of catch that connection. So if you want to go sorry, and listen yeah. to her interview, um, I think it was episode number three. So you can go back and check that out. But thanks again, Scott. And um, I will put all of the information and the books he referenced. We'll put those in the show notes too, for everyone. That's great. All Thank right. You. Thanks so much, y'all. We will catch you on the next episode. And you know that I'm believing in you always. Well, that's a wrap, friends, for this week's episode of the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me. And listen, friend, sharing is caring. So if you loved this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link share this episode or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Always.